it's me. <laughs> okay, um, so we've been looking at the life of Moses. But before I jump into that, um, I took permission from Amanda to share something with you guys. Yesterday we were talking about um, just the same thing that um, she just made us do this morning. And we're looking at the different ways of listening to God and what God is doing as we pray. We shared a lot. And one of the things I talked about, you can this, you know, you know, some of us, we, we hear God differently, right? You can hear God through the word, through songs. So I've had a song that have dropped in my, you know, my spirits this week. And I'm thinking, what am I dancing for? I need to know what God is doing. But yeah, I waited. When we finished from here yesterday, I got home and the news came. Now, the song that was playing in my head was, I've got too many reasons to give you praise. Oh God, you are good. And when I got home, my daughter, the last one, Annie, said to me, Mom, um, I'm going to move out of my house. I said, oh, did you get the house you were trying to get? Yeah. They said, yeah, I can just give four weeks and I can move out. And this is just serious you know, answer to prayer. We've been praying for it, and God did that. Now, that's my testimony for hearing God and you know, God doing something. Last week, Helen took us through the thing, how you know, Moses came to the point where he was. Um, I'm not going to take us back all the way, but I want us to just understand who Moses is. And last week, one, one of the things that, one of the questions that Helen asked is, you know, what... Is God calling you to do? You're not hearing me? Okay. Is it better now? I'll try and stand in one place then. You know I'm not very good at that, but hey, I'll try. <laughs> so, what I was saying is last week, there was a question there are, what is God calling you to do? I seen there are a lot of things going on in church today. We are being encouraged to serve. What do you think God is calling you to do? Moses was called. He was not willing to just run into it. He had a thousand and one excuses why he is not good enough. I want to take you through this, you know, let's look at it from um, a counseling or a therapeutic um, angle. Moses, I don't think, had a very high self-esteem. Uh, fear was working in him. And if you look at this, that does not actually tell you that this is who this person really is because Moses is a Levite. He was born into a Levite family. But do you know that when we are on a journey, sometimes you get details, yeah? Does that mean that the journey was not meant to happen? No. No. Moses went from being part of the Levites to being dropped in the water for safety. Another thing that happened yesterday, um, a lady I was speaking to yesterday, I called her by the name I knew her. I uh, said, oh, hi, Barbara. She said, oh, that's not my name anymore. And I'm like, yeah, what happened? What's wrong with Barbara? Oh, that means foreigner, and I'm not a foreigner. I'm like, okay, that's good. If Moses were to be alive today, do you think he would have changed his name? He called out of Do you know what the meaning of his name is? 
fetched out of water. Do you think it's a nice name? Nope. I think if Moses were here today, he could have just did poor, did poor and just changed his name. Because that's not a very nice name, is it? It doesn't actually say, I'm a Levite, I'm a priest. Fetched out of water. But he was fetched at the end out of living in Pharaoh's house as, you know, from being a priest of God, he was taken to become a priest in Pharaoh's compound. But God fetched him out when the time was right. See, sometimes when we go through a journey, we curse God, we complain. You know, I listen to this every day from my clients. One thing that God has done in the last couple of months is a lot of the clients that come to me are those that are saying, I want a Christian-based counseling. I want to get something out of my Christian faith. I want to come back to my Christian faith. But then they will come and tell you, God has actually let me down. I don't know how to continue. When we read through the Bible, sometimes we look and say, oh, why we are the Israelites so, you know, that we are always complaining. Why we are they that way? We do the same thing. We are not better. I tell you stories just now. I tell testimony of how God has helped me. Do you know how many times I have sat down and cried, why is this like this? Why is that like that? Lord, please do something about it. But am I remembering where he's taken me out of? Am I remembering how far he has brought me? By the way, Amanda, thank you for those songs. They were wonderful. They were actually to the point. We need to just look back Learn to say thank you without complaining. We're very good. We are in a, in, in a season, we are in an era where complain is very good. We do it very well. But we don't know how to, <laughs> we are not very good at appreciating what we have or where we are coming from. Somebody sent me something this morning and it made me laugh. I was telling my sister-in-law there. A young lady suing his, her parents for giving birth to her. They did not take permission from her before they conceived her. <laughs> How about that? We complain about everything. We are good at it. <laughs> did not take permission before they conceived you. And you did not tell her that she's going to grow up and get a job. You commit a sin. We are good at complaining. The Israelites complained. Because God called Moses. Gave him the instruction to get his people out. Didn't he? But it was not... Straightforward. It didn't mean that, you know, God has said, you know, um, this is going to happen in your life and the enemy will say, okay, yep, go ahead. If God gives you an instruction, try run with it, even if there are obstacles. Because the obstacles are just parts of life, isn't it? Into things. When we were talking yesterday, we talked about the different things that we hear when we listen to things. And we talked about the songs we sing. We were singing songs just now. Did you listen to the lyrics? What are they saying? The God of the mountain is still the God of the valley. So when God gives you that instruction to go, and you are going, and things are not going as you want them to go, it doesn't mean that God did not send you. Keep at it, and you will see what God will do. 
I'm going to bring us back to the scripture that we're looking at. I put in this um, Esther chapter 5, I just wanted to pick everything out, what was all in it, okay? So paraphrasing it, um, in Exodus chapter 5, we are told of the problems Moses faced. Pharaoh denied the Israelites permission to leave. And at the end, the Hebrew people themselves, they got really depressed about this because from where somebody will supply you, let's say for today, cement, sand, water, shovel, and everything you need to mold a block. They said, we're not giving you anything. Go look for your own stuff. But I want you to make, if I was, you were supposed to make 20 bricks a day, I still want those 20 bricks. But I'm not giving you anything to do it. So if it were you, will you be happy? No, they had a reason to complain, but uh, we complain, but we complain. But at the end of the day, God is still God. Don't like so they complained to Moses. Moses, we don't like this. This God that you say is going to take us from this place, he's not doing it. So Moses, what did he do? He took their complaint. He heard them. He listened and took it back to the person that sent him the message. Right? So if I say, come, let me, let, let me tell you, let, let me, let's do something. Yeah? yeah? I want to live here and I want you to help me. Um, I have... I have a mole in my hand, and I think that's part of the problem. I want you to take it, take it out. Are you able to do that for me? I need it done tomorrow. <laughs> what will you say to that? Thank you. But that's what we do. Thank you very much. <laughs> when we kneel down or we stand to pray, we tell God what we want. And we walk away. But there's a better way. We need to be there. Listen to him. Know exactly what the answer is. Don't just pray and run away. See, when Moses got this, the experience of the burning bush, did he run away? No. He, he, he was so curious to know what was going on. He went closer to see. So when something is troubling you, don't run away. Come closer to God. Talk to him. Listen to him. Follow his instructions. Sometimes we hear, we say, yeah, we will do it later. And later never comes. Don't run away. He's a relational God. He wants to have a relationship with you. And how do you have a relationship with somebody if you don't talk to them? He is God. And he wants you to sit down and talk to him. In order for Moses, I think Moses had it really cool, okay? To have that experience, to be able to talk to God. I'm sure if we, if we had that, will it change us? I don't think so. We will still be doubtful. But he had that. But still, he was able to come back to God and say, you know, these people, they are your people. You are the one that said I should go and bring them out. 
See, then Moses turned again to the Lord and said, O oh Lord, why have you mistreated these people? Why did you ever send me? See the complaints? It's not saying, why did the Egyptians mistreat the people? It's saying, why did you mistreat these people? Since I first came to Pharaoh, in your name, he has mistreated these people. And you have done nothing at all to deliver them. God have done nothing at all. See, they did not look at what God was doing. Not in their life. The kind of treatment they were getting, if God was not in the journey, they would have died. But they were not looking at that. They were looking at the pain they were going through. They saw the pain and were crying to God. But because they were going via somebody, Moses, they went to Moses. But we have something different today. Through Christ, we have access. We can kneel down in our houses. We can stand anywhere you are and talk to God. The Bible says we should pray without ceasing. Keep going. Keep pushing. Push, push, push. Don't stop. I always say to my clients, you know, the, 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 the only time that we stop learning is when we are lying down and going under, six feet under. So we keep learning. We keep pushing. We keep asking. We keep loving on this God that loves us so much and has given us so much. I don't know about you. When you look at your life, what do you see? Do you see this God that have pulled you out of where you were to where you are today? Do you see how much he has done for you? I always say if you think he didn't do anything for you, think about this. You are breathing. You are alive. You didn't go to bed last night and didn't wake up today. That's enough to be grateful. That is enough to be grateful. I've seen too many people that went to bed in the night, didn't wake up in the morning, not because they were old. No. Young people. So for to be alive is a reason to be grateful. And when you kneel down or you stand to pray today, please spend some few minutes, you know, being still. Be still in his presence. Take some time, you know, go out for a walk in the park. Play some praise and worship music in your ears and just listen to them. See the beauty of his creation and at the same time pray because at that point you are not distracted about, you know, going to do the washing, you know, going to wash something else when you are walking. You're facing something. So you will hear him. You can be walking and praying and you will hear him clearer than you would when you say you're going to stay somewhere to do it. Being the na nature is beautiful. That's his creation. Speak to him in it. And see what he will do. You know, God did wonders. And when I started this, as soon as I, I looked at it, what the Holy Spirit laid in my heart is that he's a covenant-keeping God. If he said it, he will do it. If he promised it, he will bring it to pass. If he told you to go somewhere, there is a reason. If something happened to you, that you think is unfair, I will say, go back on your knees and ask him, what was the point of this? Because there's always a lesson. 
I give clients, you know, to examine their day. Ask yourself, did you say, oh, my day was horrible. Really? The whole day? I'm less always a good, a bad, and some lessons you are learning from that day that you should take with you to your next day. But because we are too busy holding pity party for ourselves about the things that did not work right, we forget to learn the lessons, we forget to feel and learn from the pain that we have just walked through. And that's not the way to live life. Let's know that the life we live in, there is good, bad, and ugly, but at the same time, there are lessons. You know, like, you know those of you that play games? When you play a game, you collect stars, isn't it? The stars you collect are for you to, 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 to go through the journey, you know, faster and safer, like it will let you pass through some places. That's what the things that, the negatives that comes in our life, that's what they are. They help us learn, learn about things that will help us in the next stage of our journey. But if you decide not to pay attention to that, and you only pay attention to the pain that was in it, learn from it. Learn from it. Um, so, all this happened. Moses went back to God, asked God for help, and guess what? God helped them and reminded them about the promise. This promise was given years ago, but God is telling them, I will give this to you. I promised, and I will not fail. I don't promise like, you know, everybody else does. Your brother, your sister, your mother, your father can promise you that they will give you a house, and then leave you with nothing. God is not like that. If he said it, he will do it. He'll take you through that Red Sea. He will part the Red Sea and say, my daughter, my, my son, walk through. The problems you carry, bring it to God. Ask him, how? How can I navigate through this? What can I do? Who have you put in place to help me through this journey? Because sometimes you have somebody in place that God has put in place to help you through the journey. You just need to reach out to that person. I laughed yesterday. Why? Because somebody said to me, uh, a client came to me and says, oh, I just want a therapist. I said, so what's the problem? I don't have a problem yet. But I want to have a therapist in case the problem comes. And I was like, until last night when I was going to sleep, I was still laughing. I said, how can you go away to say, I am preparing for the problem, though the problem is not here. How about that? Let's prepare our minds so well to link on to God hold on to him, saying, in case the problems come, I am under his covering, and he will always be there to listen to me. So she says, oh, so I can have somebody to talk to when I feel depressed later, because I know I get depressed sometimes. She's hooking up to something that she feels will help her later. What are you hooking up to? Are you hearing God? Are you hooked up to God? Are you under his shadows? Is, are you under the rock? He's the rock that is higher and stronger than you. He's calling you. Say, come. I will shield you. But you just have to come. I want to save you. I want to keep you. I want to help you. The load you're carrying is a lot. Come. 
Don't come to church with a rucksack in your back. Next week is rucksack Sunday, isn't it? Don't come to church with a rucksack in your back with pain, worries. Come to church and you say, okay, stay here now. Okay? And when you finish church, you say, okay, when they say in Jesus' name, amen, you come, you say, okay, let me carry my, my load back. Let's learn to live it at the foot of the cross because God wants us to do so. That's the best way for us to go. And that's how we can go. The Israelites got their deliverance. It took years, but they got there. And at the same time, we can also become winners in this journey. But only if we listen to him, hear him, and do what he has said we should do. Amen.